How many of you in this room are 15 years old or older? Okay. At 15, I stuck a needle full of crystal meth in my arm for the first time. I stayed awake all night and all the next day and I met a boy in Bear Creek Park in my neighborhood and I've beaten him since. Do you see why tonight's song is what it is? Over the years that have followed, I did literally thousands of dollars worth of drugs. Eventually hundreds of dollars a day to the song Comfortably Numb and another song by my idol, Randy Rhodes and Ozzy Osbourne called Diary of a Madman. Is it any wonder that both of these songs speak about almost insanity? Guys, I want to tell you, I'm borderline nuts anyway. But I was absolutely crazy. I was so miserable. I hurt so badly over the people who didn't love me anymore that turned their back on me. I was so angry about the fact that everything I loved and was so passionate about was castigated and shunned by the people that I thought were my friends and my family. I was in severe pain. And I thought at the time I could cloak that pain with drugs. My heart, the same heart that houses the first step on the stairway to heaven, was a dark and dangerous place that worships rock and roll music in a drug-induced haze. Now, I'm terrified right now. And I want you to say, you know, to yourself, wonder why, if I were that age, sitting in this room tonight, listening to a guy like me, I would get the absolute wrong message. I would. And I'm terrified that one of you or more, of one, more than one of you are going to do the same thing tonight. I'm afraid you're going to walk out of here tonight and think that anything that I say sounds cool. I want you to do something. Before you decide, I want you to make a commitment to me right now. When I'm done, you decide what you want to. It's up to you and God and the Holy Spirit. But for right now, I want you to promise me, by a show of hands, I want you to promise me that you will reserve judgment on whether or not my story sounds cool until I'm done. Will you do that for me? If you'll do that for me, just raise your hand. Thank you. Because there's many adjectives that could describe my life up to this point. But cool isn't one you use very much. It's not one that would even come close to describing what I want to talk to you about this evening. In here today, in this room, are people that are struggling with all kinds of things. They're struggling with the language of their hearts. What is your heart saying? What's it speaking? Maybe you're not worshiping rock and roll. Maybe you're not an IV drug user. But you're struggling. That is why you are here. You're not here by accident. God sent you here to hear this. Please listen. The Bible has nothing to say specifically about drug use. You can do some word studies and make this really quantum leap about the word pharmacosay if it's in the book of Revelation, but I'm telling you, the Bible doesn't say anything about drug use specifically. But it has a lot to say about being in your right mind, being sober, and guarding your heart against the evil of your mind. It has plenty to say about that. When your mind is altered, your guard is down. Did you hear what I said? When your mind is altered, and you feel like you're salving the pain, what you're really doing is lowering your guard. That diligent watch over your heart that we talked about last night is gone. And you are vulnerable. You're weak. You're defenseless. And that is when the devil will attack you. And he will take control of your heart. When the devil controls your heart, Ladies and gentlemen, you will change your heart language. What your life speaks will not be the grace of God. Your life will speak for Satan. And if that doesn't bother you, I'm terrified for you. 
And if it doesn't bother you, the concept that maybe your life will speak for Satan, I want you to sit here tonight and I want you to absolutely examine whether or not you really do have a relationship with Jesus Christ. I failed to guard my heart. And I'm telling you, if you had been me, you would have all kinds of reasons for that failure to make sense. I'm telling you, it wasn't easy to be me in those Bible-thumping backgrounds where I grew up. But I failed to guard my heart. And the devil did exactly what I'm warning you about tonight to me. I am sitting here telling you that I spoke for Satan with my life as a Christian. And you know what? I'm going to echo my father. Hopefully, as you heard my father's testimony, he said, well, you know, the apple really doesn't fall far from the tree. Some of you uh, theologians in the room tonight are saying, no, you weren't saved. You just thought you were. I don't care if you believe me or not. I was just as saved as you are here tonight. And my life spoke for Satan because I didn't guard my heart. I let my guard down. I didn't remain sober and vigilant. And the devil came and approached my life in such a way to where it spoke absolutely for him. Now, I'm not going to tell you I was demon possessed because I don't believe that's possible for a Christian. But I can tell you I might well admit because my life spoke for Satan. Listen, believers, you have to live a careful and controlled life all the time. You have to stay alert. You have to be alert to the devil and his temptations at all times. You must be alert enough to see the temptations and attacks coming and have a mind and a spirit strong enough to stand up against the temptations and attacks. Now, y'all, that's where we're at here tonight. When the devil controls your heart, he'll control your heart language. Please listen to me. I failed to, lie, to guard my heart and do exactly that to me. If you have your Bibles, I want you to open them real quick. To the book of 1 Peter. It says in verse 8 and 9, Be sober. Be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, is prowling around like a roaring lion looking for anyone he can devour. Resist him, firm in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are being experienced by your brothers in the world. I'm going to read it again. I want